water is becoming a, a bigger and bigger issue and uh, we have less access to it. Another concurrent theme in agriculture these days is just systems that are really reliant on a lot of inputs like plastic and irrigation and like applying tons and tons of water. We decided to grow about two acres here in dry farmed vegetables which means that we don't have to um, weed nearly as much. We don't have to buy plastic for weed suppression or to lay out for drip irrigation. What that means is that we, we have a, a good window if we do it right in May through June where we pretty much don't have to do any um, any work. If you're not um, you know setting up irrigation, moving irrigation pipe, fixing your pump, um, you know putting that time into irrigation and then irrigating weeds that you're then managing, you're freeing up a lot of time. That's one of the reasons I did this is because I've tried different things and, and everything seems to be so labor intensive. And also the water required and last year there were uh, some of the people had their water shut off out here because of the um, the water right shut off because of the uh, low water. And so I thought, well, I'm not going to fight these guys that have these big farms. I'll just see what I can do to work with these fellows and, and just find something that I can do that will that I will be productive for me, but not infringe on what they've already started. So this seems to be the answer. I think there's a lot that we are capable of growing without watering here and it's site specific you know we're all on different sites you know how deep your soil is like the water holding capacity and all these things play into it the microclimate so they um, everybody's in a different situation but I think we're in a pretty special place with this dry Mediterranean like climate with these dry summers and 40 plus inches of annual rainfall where there's a lot that we can do without irrigation. Well, I, was, I was surprised that we could grow something like a pumpkin, which takes a lot of water. Uh, our summers are fairly dry, mm -hmm. and if you look at the fields around, they dry up, yet we got this lush green pumpkin field that has not, not been watered. All we did was prep it. Uh, I'd say experiment. Mm -hmm. That's all we did, that's how we got started. Mm -hmm. We had some seeds, we planted it, it's like, oh my goodness, they, ran, they grew. Next year I want to increase my, my varieties of things, you know, grow pumpkins and grow a different variety of cantaloupe, and, and I'm gonna try corn and some other things like that. And you know, a climate like this, I think anybody could probably do dry farming if they had the space, because one of the concepts here is that, that the, the plants are spaced far enough apart so that, uh, you know, this is just like, you know, this is my spot, These are this is my root spot. And so you have to give each plant that benefit to where they can grow out and they can grow down. So with the dry farmed uh, tomatoes, a lot of people, uh, dry farmed tomatoes have a, a cult following, especially in California, the dry farmed early girl tomato. And um, I've gotten uh, the pleasure of tasting a lot of them. And they are more concentrated in sugars and less watered down. Uh, we got to taste some of those today, like doing side by side, and the texture is like, you know, different as well. So sweetness and texture and color, um, the dry farm tomatoes are, are loved by a lot of people. When I bring these two people to taste, they, their eyes always light up and, and um, they're really impressed by the flavor and, and how um, they're not like really mealy or, you know, they, they are, I think, a, a superior product in a lot of ways. And, um, like I said, I think the results will speak for themselves over the long run and um, in a lot, of, a lot of circumstances I don't think that we'll have the option to do things in a, in a different way. Um, if, if water does get cut off in mid-season right when you need it the most, what, um, you know, what are you going to do? We're developing strategies and building this kind of drought mitigation toolbox um, decades in advance, then I think that's going to um, build resiliency in our in our food system and um, and maybe you know we'll be conserving a lot of water as well.